There aren't too many products as bad for your lungs as breathing asbestos, but one of them is smoking cigarettes. So it's a little mind-boggling to realize that cigarettes used to be sold with asbestos filters. Maybe even more mind-boggling is that these asbestos-filtered cigarettes were sold as a healthier alternative. Welcome to Asbestos Artifacts, where we take a look at some old asbestos products and dig a little bit into the story behind them. I'm asbestos attorney Justinian Lane, and today's asbestos artifact is a box of Kent Micronite cigarettes. In fact, the most popular brand of filtered cigarettes had filters made with asbestos. And not just asbestos, they were made with chrysotile, also known as blue asbestos, which is the most dangerous kind of asbestos to breathe. So let's look at some of these Kent cigarettes. I have a few empty packs. This is a very small pack. I, I wasn't a smoker in the 1950s, so I don't know if this is how common they were this small. But in this tiny little pack, it even says on the back, scientifically, the most effective filter ever developed to free cigarette smoke of impurities, removes nicotine and tar particles as small as two tenths of a micron, leaves in the rich, mild flavor of fine tobacco. No other cigarette approaches such a degree of health protection and taste satisfaction. I mean, this is a health food product, according to them, right here. You smoke this, it's healthy. These are a couple of other packs of the more typical size that I've seen, and they don't have the same health warning on them. And this one even says, uh, warning, the Surgeon General has determined the cigarette smoking is dangerous to your health. Didn't mention about asbestos being dangerous to your health. And by the time the Surgeon General had figured it out about cigarettes, they also knew about asbestos, too. Let's back up a second, though. When did cigarettes come to this country? They first came to America in the mid-1800s. Sailors brought them to the Northeast and from Latin America through Louisiana to the South. By the Civil War, pipes and cigars were still popular. Cigarettes were also popular, but cigarettes were expensive and they had to be rolled by hand. So the cigarette industry offered a $75,000 prize to a person who could invent a machine that rolls cigarettes. A guy named James Bonsack did it, revolutionizing the industry. By the 1870s, demand for cigarettes was high and hand rollers weren't enough. Even an experienced cigarette roller could only roll about four cigarettes per minute. That meant in a 10-hour shift, a roller could produce about 2,400 cigarettes. In the same 10-hour shift, Bonsack's machine could roll 120,000 cigarettes. Demand for cigarettes doubled in the U.S. every five years. Now, the temperance movement, which had banned drinking, also tried to ban smoking, saying it was immoral and unhealthy. But during World War I, smoking grew very popular, and army surgeons said that cigarettes helped wounded people relax and ease their pain. People didn't realize just how unhealthy that smoking was, and that's why cigarettes at the time did not have filters. Now, what happened is that by the 1950s, doctors had realized that cigarettes can cause lung cancer. So they published about that in medical journals. But what really got the public's attention was when an article was published about that topic in Reader's Digest. For people who don't know, long before the internet, Reader's Digest was the magazine that everybody in the country read to stay up on what was going on in the world. Now, the Reader's Digest article about lung cancer and cigarettes was just one of the first publications to come out and say that cigarettes could cause lung cancer. And the public reaction was very quick. People were wondering, should I, should I quit smoking? The cigarette industry had to figure out what they were going to do to stop that. They didn't want people to quit smoking for health reasons or they'd go out of business. So one company, Lorillard Tobacco, came up with a strategy. Their plan was to discredit the science, muddy the waters, and sell their own healthy alternative to quitting smoking by rejecting the cancer claims. See, they said that the problem wasn't cigarettes, it was the tar in the cigarettes, and that cigarette filters could filter out the tar and solve the health problem. There were a few filtered brands of cigarettes on the market, but they weren't very popular. So Lower Lard went further than just making up filters. They made up a cool name for their filters. They called it Micronite, which sounded really high tech at the time. Lower Lard also launched a full marketing campaign for Kent cigarettes to market them as a healthy smoking alternative. They placed ads in American Medical Association journals, and they claimed that an AMA study that they invented proved that of all the cigarette filters, the Micronite filter is the best at removing tar. They claimed that Micronite filters offered the greatest health protection in history. Wow. But it worked. Kent quickly became the leading brand of filtered cigarettes and Lorillard sales ballooned. In just their first four years, Lorillard sold 13 billion Kent Micronite filtered cigarettes. In one of their internal documents, they say, 
Kent entered the filter field with extremely strong advertising based on health protection claims as demonstrated with the smoke test, and the brand got off to a remarkable start in spite of the fact that it cost four cents a pack more than competitive brands. Anyone smoking them was directly inhaling asbestos into their lungs. Micronite was not a scientific product. Micronite in that way is a bit like asbestos. Asbestos is just an industry term for a group of minerals with similar properties. Maybe that's appropriate since the so-called Micronite filters were brand name for a mix of crepe paper and asbestos. See, asbestos is fibrous, but extremely durable and resistant to things like heat and acid and rust. So for a long time, asbestos was used by industry for a number of things, including filtering out contaminant particles. The chemical company Hollingsworth & Vose made air filtration paper that was used in all kinds of air vents from wherever air needed to be filtered. As part of their marketing campaign, Lorillard was very secretive about what exactly the formula of Micronite was. But today, we know that it contained Hollingsworth & Vose's filter paper that was made with chrysidolite fibers. Here, you see a close-up of the asbestos filters, and the fluffy white bits the arrow is pointing to are microscopic chrysidolite fibers. If you inhale asbestos fibers into your lungs, they will get embedded there, and after several decades, they may cause a number of health problems, including lung cancer. All kinds of asbestos are considered very unhealthy, and all types can cause cancer. But chrysidolite is widely considered to be the most dangerous type of asbestos and the most likely to cause an aggressive and painful cancer called mesothelioma. Mesothelioma is absolutely not caused by smoking. It is caused by asbestos exposure. The asbestos and tobacco industries learned from each other about how to attack science that was coming out to show that their products were dangerous and how to fund their own bogus counter studies to try to prove their products were safe. In the case of Lorillard, you had the two industries working together, selling one carcinogen and claiming to make it healthier by filtering it with another carcinogen. When the truth came out about asbestos, the industry had a reckoning about all the information it had covered up showing the product was dangerous. Lorillard has been sued a number of times because of how dangerous their products were, and there have been a number of multi-million dollar verdicts against that company. In fact, just as recently as 2015, two different juries awarded seven-figure awards to the people and families who had been killed by smoking asbestos filtered Kent cigarettes. Thank you for watching today's installment of Asbestos Artifacts, and I look forward to seeing you next time.